Hey, check out our new test tube app in the iTunes store. Download it, give us a rating, let us know what you think, okay? Okay. Hey there, I'm Josh Clark, and in this Brain Stuff, I explain to you how the tides work. Have you ever seen somebody buried up to their neck in sand on the beach, and then the tide slowly comes in and they drown, and wondered, I wonder how tides work? Well, next time, you'll know, and you can explain it to that person as they wait to die. We need to be very careful here, because as French astronomer Francois Arago once said, studying the tides is the tomb of human curiosity, which means it can break your brain, as you'll see. There's a lot of factors involved in creating the tides here on Earth, but the big three are the moon, the sun, and the Earth. The gravitational pull of all three of those bodies interacting creates the tides. The biggest factor actually is the moon. It exerts about 2.2 times more power on the tides than the sun does. So for once, the moon gets to one-up the sun. It's kind of a big deal to it. Imagine for our purposes the earth is right here and the moon is directly above it. Now, they exert a gravitational pull on one another and since uh, on the earth most things are pinned down, we have shoes, uh, buildings have foundations, stuff stays in place. But the oceans, being literally fluid, actually can be pulled toward the moon. And this is what creates the tide. The moon's here, it's pulling on the ocean at the top of the earth, creating a high tide on the top. And on the bottom, another high tide is created because the earth itself is pulled toward the moon, even though the oceans down here have less gravitational pull exerted on them, being farthest away from the moon. So on the top and bottom, you have high tide, because of the tidal bulges, and on the sides that are at right angles to the moon, you have low tide, because the oceans stretch thin over the surface of the Earth. Pretty crazy, huh? So, like I said, the sun also exerts an influence on the tides, but it's less pronounced than the moon's. See, it actually enhances or diminishes the gravitational pull of the moon here on Earth. When the sun and the moon are in alignment, the sun enhances the moon's gravitational pull creating higher tides than normal. They're called spring tides, and they happen on a full moon or a new moon. Now when the sun and the moon are at right angles to one another, with the Earth right about here, the sun diminishes the gravitational pull of the moon on Earth, creating lower than normal high tides, also called neap tides. These happen on the quarter moons. Because the Earth and the moon are constantly moving and moving around one another, uh, there's a constant movement from high tide to low tide. Twice a day, you get a high tide in most places, usually once every 12 hours and 25 minutes. But this can vary, and some places only see a high tide once every 24 hours. Those are called diurnal tides. So this is a daily occurrence, actually twice daily in most places. But tidal waves, even though they have the word tide in them pretty much, but without the E, they're not related to this gravitational push and pull. They're usually the result of earthquakes. So that's tides. Hopefully we avoided that uh, tomb of human curiosity and you guys get it. If not, going back and watching it again, there's no shame in that. It's pretty heavy stuff. If you like this video, let us know. Leave us a comment below and hey, subscribe. Why not? <laughs>